Hi guys, this is Leroy. Welcome back to the third and final part of the Smash Captain on Bike. If you haven't seen the other two parts, go. I suggest you go watch them. Uh, I am just showing you how I prep the model for priming while I ramble a bit. This video took a lot longer to make than what I originally thought it was going to, and I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, there's a lot of things um, I really want to do in future. It's like I want to get a new camera and buy some music to make the videos like feel much more epic but uh much more on that later i actually ended up double priming this model to make it more hardy and less likely to chip the next step was using an old black rattle can but this ended up being a mistake as it was too old and the paint came out powdery to the touch this can happen with old cans and some cans depending on many factors that i won't go into now Luck but luckily i was able to smooth it out and fix it with washes later. I gently scored and drilled up the gun barrels. This piece ended up being more of a competition piece, so I decided to put a lot more detail into it, although in hindsight I should probably get in the habit of drilling out the barrels for my marines in future, for all of my models anyway. After double priming, I used Vallejo German Grey Green on the underside. This color isn't too obvious. Um, I think I may have ended up mixing in some Corvus Black uh, from the GW paint range to darken it more as the gray green uh, the the gray green isn't it's almost indistinguishable from the gray primer. Next up with the airbrush was a build up of two paints, uh, the layer medium olive green and then the next layer was a mix of the same medium olive and moot green in about a 50-50 mix. You can also see my Invictus suit and the spray booth at the same time, so getting two highly detailed models undercoated at the same time helps speed things up later. Because I messed up earlier with the powdery undercoat, I used a lot more ca um, camo trade, but this ended up looking better than expected and really darkened up the underside of the model where most of the grey green was. I used a lot of camo trade to fix up the whole thing, including the shield and backpack. Uh, on all of the cracks where the edge highlighting would go next to it later. I put about twice as much camo shade on those cracks and recesses. Once I had fixed up most of the powdery coat before with all the washes, I moved on to painting all the metal with lead belcher. This was particularly tricky as I kind of messed up the sub-assembly and the side panels on the, uh, the new Outrider bikes, if you try to dry fit them, they'll actually get stuck and if you try and pull them apart, they'll end up almost breaking so it wasn't worth pulling it apart so I ended up just leaving that together and not doing a sub-assembly. It would have helped to build a regular Outrider first, but I was just too keen to make a character. Oh well, live and learn I guess. The rims and exhaust were a pain to get painted without that sub-assembly. Not to mention the Marine's waistline, belts and pouches are harder to paint and assemble because of the way the model fits into the legs and the legs are attached to the side panels. Just something to remember if you're assembling this model yourself or any one of the Outriders. I base coated the skeleton body on the front of the bike, the parchment I sculpted onto the shield, and all of the leather with Wraithbone. When painting the details on the shield, I had to hold onto it with tweezers, and it, as it's much too fiddly to handle with just your fingers, and it would slide around if I tried painting it directly while it was on the desk. Base coating the leather with Wraithbone was kind of an experiment as I only had snakebite leather contrast at the time. Previously I used grey primer for base coating the leather, but I wanted to try something different and see how it would change the uh, contrast, but it didn't end up looking quite as good as I hoped, but you'll see that later. Another reason I used a contrast paint here is I couldn't get the brush in to paint the belt in all the angles that I wanted because the current lack of sub-assembly really just made things more difficult. On the exhaust, I used Corvus Black to paint the shadows and the holes. I thought about drilling the exhausts out at the back, but this would have required more green stuff or maybe extra pieces of like starring piping to look good, so I just left it undrilled. I also used Corvus Black for the tires, as a bad black would look much too dark and not look like rubber. I think I like Corvus Black as my new favorite color for tires and shadows, as it's much more subtle and nowhere near as harsh as a Baden Black. 
Another advantage to using Corvus Black is that it can shade, you can shade it with non oil or a dark wash, which won't show up on bad and black, but it will show up on Corvus Black. Because I need a better camera with an actual viewfinder, you can't actually see it too well what I'm doing here, but basically I'm base coating the hammer grip with the Phoenician purple. Like, it doesn't matter what your accent color is for your army, just make sure to maintain that accent color. And I just happen to go with Phoenician purple on most of my hammers and random weapons. For the skeleton, I used Reichland Flesh Shade for the bone and Sapia for the parchment. This will help you distinguish between the two materials as they're very close in color. I also used the Serapin Sapia for the parchment on shield, but I used a lot more because of the larger surface area and I want to create more variation in the area. This shading also helps to define the folds of the material a lot better. I then used Tyrant Skull. I ended up using quite a bit as the highlighted area would be flat and the lit area would be about 40% of the top half of the parchment. Tyrant Skull is kind of a weak color anyway, so I mostly just use it to layer. Dry paints are kind of hit or miss, as sometimes they can be too dry or too wet, and I'd much rather just use wet paint and dry the brush off a bit. But that's GW paints for you. Using the same dry paint on the skeleton, I made sure to pick out each individual bone, knuckle, and rib, so this took a bit more time and focus. This was a pretty basic way to paint bone, as it was my first time painting bone, at least I think, I'm not too sure. If um, you have any techniques that you would think would work better for bone, leave a comment down below. This next part is where I was experimenting with the snake bike le leather. I don't think I'll use this much except on troops or hordes in future. Like I mentioned before, um, I just used this as the it's the only paint I had on hand to paint leather. Next up was the shoulders. This is the only time I really like using a bad and black as you want something super dark to contrast the bright white salamander symbols. Try not to cover the green, but bring the black right up against the edge of the sho shoulder pad. A side note, these 3D Primaris upgrade pads look great, but they're a bitch to paint. Balthazar Gold was used to, for the Aquila on the chest, and then a Reichland Flesh Shade and highlighted with Gianna's Gold. This might come up later in the video. There's a lot of steps that I may have missed or covered twice accidentally. I used the same gold technique on the iron halo on top. At least I think it's an iron halo. Um, all captains have the symbol like above their backpack. I would like to also in future try non-metallic golds for these golds and stuff, but I don't have the time or paint to do non-metallic gold at the moment. I used Wraithbone to base the symbol. Moat Green was used for a lot of the large panels to layer on highlights. There was a lot of space to cover on these new Outrider bikes, so I probably should have tried wet blending here, but instead of ju I just layered because I was sticking to what I knew at the time and I just needed to get this painted um, on time. I ended up taking a lot of unnecessary shortcuts and didn't use a wet palette as much as you might think. You might cringe at me taking a lot of paints direct from the pot. I think subconsciously I did this because I was focusing on the filming rather than the painting and this is something I need to work on in future videos. The moot green on the paneling took a lot of time to do. Some panels were 70% of the panel in the moot green for the top panels, for example, whereas the bottom panels might have only been about 40%. This is a skill that takes a lot of time to practice and get right, and I really only have an intermediate level skill level in this, but it's something that I would try wet blending on in future. Only after filming myself painting do I really see where my biggest pitfalls lie, and even this skill level can help others in where they may be falling short as well. I base coated the rocky areas with Mordfang Brown. This color may seem too bright at first, but I can really darken up later with the watches anyway. I used Earthshade and Rakeland. I didn't show that in this video because this video is getting a bit too long and I wanted to save that for another video. Not only that, this video was getting far too long for my old PC to handle, which is what I use for editing. Maybe it's the program, it 
just likes to crash if anything goes longer than 12 minutes for some weird reason. It's not even that bad of a PC. I think the GPU is just fried from ranking classic WoW for 16 hours a day. Just another reason to quit WoW and I started paint making painting videos. Anyway, here you see me adding Badlands texture paint around the edge of the base. I didn't show much more of the base in this video, but I just put this in just to show the basics. Because it's a thick paste like paint, I had to use the green stuff sculpting tool and a wet brush to push it off of the tool and push it around the uh, the base to get it to really stick. I also think I used three texture paints, the dunes, the badlands, and uh, the dust, oh, Armageddon dust that is. Onto the fun part, and by fun I mean the hardest part of the model, painting the faces. For the fleshless salamanders, you have to use a really dark gray because in a lore, they live on a volcano planet and have mutated to survive on this planet. I don't know what the exact lore is, but it's like they probably have like some minerals and stuff incorporated into their skin. So for this, I use a Black Templar's contrast paint. I find this is the easiest way, and this is probably one of the better contrast paints, in my opinion. Then use a very light Enshan Grey highlight on the skin. Um, I don't think I showed this in the video. Then moving on to the green panels on the backs of their head and neck, I use the same medium olive that I used for the rest of the bike and armor. Um, also, Warpstone Green is pretty much the same um, as this color. Highlighting with Moot Green, taking extra care not to get it on the skin as this will be extremely hard to fix. Using the sharp tip of the brush, I paint the mechanical eye with Avaland Sunset as a base coat. It's pretty much the main part of the paint job where you just have to paint the eyes over and over again to till you get it right and concentrate super hard. If it's just troops, I tend to just go for it and not worry about it and fix them up later if I have to. I only had Wild, Wild Rider Red on hand to paint the regular unhelmeted eye. Yeah, these guys have red eyes as well as dark gray skin. They're pretty much Sith. If uh, I wanted to go hardcore painting these eyes, I'd probably start with a corn red and more add more colors. But I might need a fancy one of those artifice brushes for that. And that's like $80 that I don't have for one paintbrush at the moment. I then added random highlights to spots that might need fixing up that I might have missed earlier. Open the head off the wire, leaving about one to two millimeters of wire, and then grab them with the tweezers so it makes them easier to grip when placing it inside the model. After dry fitting, the wire didn't fit, so I drilled out the hole slightly wider with my hand drill. It was pretty stiff because of the green stuff that I packed into it earlier, but eventually I dug through it. Lastly, I added a bit of super glue, and the way it slotted into place was probably the most satisfying part of this build. There was a bunch more details that I added after filming this because I was going to submit this to as a competition piece for a small competition near me. I probably won't win, but it's at least worth giving it a try. This video took me much longer than I had originally anticipated and I expect I'll have to try much different editing styles in future. So if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Additionally, I also stream almost weekly mostly on Saturdays and Sundays over on my Twitch page of the same name. Um, not just 40k stuff, but also art and other games. Uh, lastly, for more photos and close-ups of the finished captain, you can head on over to my Instagram or DeviantArt pages. I'll have them posted up soon. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.